Aquarius, welcome to your summarized reading for 2020. This is an annual reading and um, the first half, the top half of this layout here is representing the first half of 2020, the, the first six months. And this is the last six months. So January through June, July through December. And I'm seeing in the spread a lot of aces and a lot of tens and i could definitely see with the um, oracle advice confirmation that you are completing things which is 10 and you're coming into new beginnings which is one and definitely with three aces showing up here you've got a lot of good news coming in this year and that's positive you're closing some things out though with the tens which is totally understandable given the fact that hey i've been saying to you since 2017 that you know we're shutting out major major phase in our lives with Saturn having been in our 12th house since late tw 2017 and by the way it's coming out finally um, December of this year we will have Saturn moving into our first house by December of this year so really fantastic stuff of course i talk more about the astrology over there but just suffice it to say in a nutshell what this means is that we're not just turning a new chapter or a new page in life this is a major shift for aquarius we are shutting out closing out a 29 year cycle and by december beginning a new uh, 29 year cycle major stuff so you, yeah, you're not you're not just turning the new a new page. You're not just moving on to the next chapter in life. You're actually getting on to the next book in a series in a trilogy on your life, okay? Big stuff. Big stuff going on. And so you know, I know a lot of you want to know about relationships and resources over this year, and I definitely talk in more detail about it. Let me say with relationships, there's a lot of activity going on in the fifth house, and there's energy going on with Uranus and Neptune, which is drawing a lot of people. Also, 11th house, likely meeting people through social groups and networks, having fun, having romance, a lot of opportunities for that. But because of seventh house being a bit lackluster this year, um, getting a serious commitment might be a miss. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there because I, I can't lie to you. It is what it is. Okay, I do see things getting very steamy. <laughs> the steamiest month here is going to be October of 2020. And I'm going to tell you if somebody's on your radar by late summer, early fall of 2020, get really close within their periphery. Okay, because the energy is going to promote closeness and things warming up with these connections and this by the way is also going to be the best most opportune time to get a deepening of a commitment during this time but I just got to warn you because of the energy yeah you could have a lot of romantic opportunities and that's nothing new for us but you know if, if you're like me and the other Aqu a lot of Aquarians I know we want something more on a long term that might be a miss and even if you have that opportunity you might not be feeling clear within yourself about offering it because we're so much in a state of flux right now we're going through so many changes spiritually and psychologically because of what I said with Saturn uh, moving out this 29-year cycle into a new 29-year cycle. The person that you meet this year may not be able to go and grow in the direction you're destined to. And so even if you have the opportunity for a deepened commitment this year, you need to really hold your horses on r rushing into a commitment because you need to kind of take a wait-and-see approach. Is this person going to be able to go and grow with you? Now, oh, I have so much to say. It's on Vimeo, but let me say, coming into this year, I think energetically, you, you're very ambitious with the energy, um, with creative projects. Money is on fire for us this year. And I'm going to say, even though I didn't tell you maybe everything you wanted to hear about relationships, that it really kind of shines a greater light on what's going on with money. This could be a year where things finally start stabilizing, whereas with previous years, 
it's almost like stability has been an impossibility. There have been so many losses for us financially, but you start seeing a return on investment finally. Um, even though I can see it coming into January, some of you are still focused on old wounds and it might have to do with a fire sign. Fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, particularly Aries came up a lot in this reading, might have to do with getting truth and healing regarding a commitment, a man of commitment, or getting a man of commitment. I do see in February, you are networking and maybe getting communications with somebody, but realizing something's on hold, you've got to sacrifice something or um, get a new perspective about something. And then with March, with the Three of Water celebration, because maybe I see you moving on uh, by taking care of yourself, your finances with these two threes here, a lot of growth and expansion. Even at the end of the year, I see that again. Um, with a page of earth, let me say, if you have put a job application out in February, you could get the job offer as late as April. But I'm also seeing for some of you, this is a new opportunity to move house. It's some kind of financial opportunity here. But just be warned about, you know, what you are verbally committing yourself to. Be careful about contracts. For some of you, there might be difficulty in getting this new beginning. Don't worry, it's coming. I see a lot of movement this entire, um, you know, first six months of the year. Six of air came up like four times in three different, or three times in three different decks. So you're definitely moving on with something. And I see a bit of a struggle here, okay, to break loose of something. And there's a definite burden to get manifestation. But I see by the end of June, bingo, there it is with the Queen of Water, where there's emotional fulfillment and happiness and wish fulfillment. And you finally moving on from something that you've maybe struggled to let go of. And then with the Eight of Air, I'm seeing... Um, that coming into July, there might be a feeling of holding back. You're holding, and this is kind of self-imposed that you've decided to do this because there's a lack of agreement with somebody, uh, maybe in a home family arrangement. You're definitely trying to maintain some harmony in a situation where there is definite disharmony. Maybe you feel like this is something you have to do for now in order to maintain harmony. But I do want to say, because of uh, the way that Jupiter is aspected the first seven months of this year, from, you know, all the way up to this point, it is the most beneficial for you financially, materially, the first seven months of this year. Now, getting into October, be aware of unequal give and take, somebody doing things in covert, lying, cheating, sneaking around, not wanting to make a decision, not wanting to see something, hear it, do anything about it, wanting to kind of fantasize that they can, you know, keep up with this and have the best of, have it their way and, you know, the best of both worlds and that type of thing. But I do see by September this issue that's been going on with lack of agreement between at least two people, if not in a group dynamic like a family. You're finally getting clarity and victory over this situation, and you are very well positioned. And again, this person might get the memo, hey, you're not going to continue on with this little fantasy land that they're in, that they can win at other people's expense and, you know, that you're going to keep engaging with them in this un unfair, unequal exchange, you finally, by, you know, maybe let's say by July, you feel like you've got to hold yourself back a bit to keep stability, harmony here. But by um, August, I'm sorry, September, you get the upper hand in this situation and bam, with the ace of fire, I can definitely see a passionate new beginning. All right, spoiler alert. Y'all know I got a bunch of clarifiers. This is the marriage happily ever after with the Queen of Swords. And guess who it's involving? Hubba hubba. Maybe taking a chance on something super, super steamy. Okay. Well, you go, go to Vimeo if you want to know more about that. Okay. Um, I see November, though, you're going to be resting and relaxing. And it's possibly this masculine energy is kind of um, 
you know, taking a step back and deciding, you know, I've got to make some plans for my future. I need to make a decision here. And so I don't know if there's a lot of action going on. It could be you that you're just pulling back to rest and recover from all of this. Um, hopefully you're, you're resting and recovering <laughs> with this lovely energy. Okay. Cause that might've been on fire for some of you. Um, but yeah, by the end of this year, a lot of responsibility and you know, a lot of people associate this card very negatively, like, oh, it's heavy burden and, you know, maybe one sided giving and it might be, but for some of you, I think this is because you've gotten into a new home. You have physically literally moved. Some of you maybe during June took a fantastic vacation. All right. Um, really good stuff. Good news coming in with your money, your property, getting movement, but there are added responsibilities. Yes, more money coming in where you are able to assume um, more expenses, okay, and in a balanced way. And you're definitely being diligent and, uh, you know, getting the growth in your life and you're persevering and working hard. Um, so I honestly see this with these responsibilities as, as something actually more in a positive tone than usual. Uh, with Nine of Earth, you're being self-sufficient. Um, and I do see with the lover's card, it may be also coming into partnership with someone romantically, professionally, might involve a Gemini. But I do see a dynamic here of single versus coupled where you're getting healed. You're getting a new beginning and this is very lucky. So yes, some of you are getting a new partner, a new love partner this um, year, but it's coming from a healed place of um, this person is adding to my life, right? This issue of, of being able to partner with somebody who is empowering us and freeing us, setting us free is really critical. And if, you know, somebody is not able to offer that, then I don't think, um, you know, you're going to want to partner with them over the long term. But look at this. You're being protected from forces beyond your control. And I saw a lot of that even with the Oracle card advice on Vimeo. A lot of uh, divine protection from negative forces and chair filled. Someone new is coming into your life. Yes, this is romance. This is romantic partnership. And you're going to do something risky. Maybe take a chance on new love again. And that's part of the healing there. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, I want to tell you that some of you are going to get new love this year. And um, for some of you, it will be a business partnership. It will be... You know, it will be different things for different people. And of course, if you want to know more about it, you go to Vimeo and look at the in-depth. And um, there's definitely Oracle advice over there with all the clarifiers. And that is all I have for you for now. I hope that I have encouraged you. And I'm wishing you guys all the best. Be blessed.